We're in the middle of summer here in the Northern Hemisphere. Europe and the US are facing record heat waves. Nature is suffering from drought. A summer of record-breaking heat is drying up rivers across Europe. Around half the continent is facing an unprecedented drought. Ever been Shipping in companies in Germany are preparing for the worst as levels on the River Rhine. Let's say welcome to global warming, everyone. Okay, uh, I shouldn't make fun of that. Today, I wanted to talk about something related that nobody seems to talk about, which is what happens to our brain when it gets too hot. Yeah, you never thought about that one, did you? Were you even aware that that, that was a thing? And yes, it does happen. It's actually way more common than you think. There was this meta study in 2006 about the effects of temperature on performance at office work done by the Helsinki University of Technology. Well, interestingly, they found that productivity would increase up to about 21, 22 degrees Celsius and start decreasing again above 24 degrees Celsius. A 2018 study from the UCLA showed the same type of effect on studying. They found a linear decline on performance for every degree above room temperature, meaning that if students have to pass an exam on a really hot day, let's say 32 degrees Celsius, they will perform on average 14% lower than if they would have passed the exam on the day with normal temperatures. So this is called heat stress. Heat stress happens when the body can't cool itself enough to maintain a healthy temperature, which can decrease our cognitive function. So our body regulates our temperature, right? Well, actually, it's our brain, it's our hypothalamus uh, who does that. But anyway, we're warm-blooded beings, meaning we keep a constant body temperature, ideally 36.9 degrees Celsius. Now, if the temperature around us drops, we automatically start to contract our muscles to, to create some extra heat. That's called shivering. Now, if on the contrary, the temperature around us goes up too much, or we create too much extra heat through intense physical activity, like sports, for example, well, we have a built-in mechanism to cool ourselves down. And yes, that's the sweating part. But sometimes things go wrong and heat stress can deteriorate into a heat stroke. When our body has to face extreme heat for too long, it can't keep up. Our body temperature rises and when we reach 40 degrees Celsius, that's when our system starts to malfunction and shuts down, literally. <laughs> and no, that's not good. We're talking organ damage, neural dysfunction, and in extreme cases, it can even lead to your death. So the hypothalamus, in charge of regulating our body's temperature, slows the activity of certain organs to prioritize the, the heart and lungs. So the gut, kidneys, and some other organs which are not directly connected to breathing or cognitive functions, well, they become less active as body temperature rises, and so blood flow can focus on our heart and brain. But that's like a short-term solution, because if this lasts too long, these organs can be permanently damaged. So what happens in our brain? Well, at 40 degrees Celsius, the blood-brain barrier begins to break down. This barrier keeps out unwanted particles and bacteria while allowing the oxygen and nutrients to go through, which the brain needs. Without that barrier, you're in trouble as you're basically opening yourself up to brain inflammation, leading to all kinds of malfunctions. But the real trouble actually starts lower with our heart. When temperature rises in our body, our blood vessels dilate and our heart needs to work harder. If the heart is pushed too hard, I say a lot of heart, our body can take drastic measures to protect itself. As we saw, cutting off blood flow to our gut and kidneys. But if that's not enough, it can also shut down our brain. Without adequate blood flow to the brain, people may experience confusion or difficulty focusing and lightheadedness. Your brain is telling you to slow down and lay down so the heart doesn't have to work as hard. This lack of oxygen to the brain will eventually cause fainting, a common side effect of brain stroke. The fainting happens because when we lay down, well, our heart doesn't have to work as hard as blood flows horizontally and no longer vertically. But our brain has a very low tolerance for going without oxygen. After only four minutes without oxygen, we start to see permanent brain damage and that follows only a couple of minutes later. I told you it wasn't good. Now, in case you think I'm exaggerating here, in the US alone, there are about 600 people dying every year of a heat stroke. It's a very real thing. 
unfortunately. So do enjoy the warm weather, but be careful. Wear a hat, drink enough water, don't engage in intense physical activity. By now, I hope you do understand you don't want your body to overheat, right? If you start feeling dizzy, get out of the sun immediately. Go inside, I don't know, take a fresh shower, for example, and just recognize our body is awesome, but has its biological limits as well. Take care of that brain of yours. Brain out.